Ned, thanks for uh, making your way to New York to uh, participate in the symposium all the way from Florida. Uh, good to see you as always. So, um, you know, you've, you've been doing this for 40 years, right? Uh, 1968. I 1968. So you've seen a lot of cycles, you've seen a lot of things come and go. And uh, so how much truth is there to the idea that um, there's nothing new under the sun and history repeats, et cetera, et cetera? Well, I, you know, I, I do think uh, that there's a, was it Mark Twain? I don't know who said it, but anyway, he says history doesn't repeat, but it rhymes. So I, mean, rhymes I think yeah. that's a better way of putting it. But, yeah. and, and I do study a lot of history, and it's amazing how many... Uh, how many times it is it is useful, but there's there's always differences, and the market market characteristics has changed a lot, right. for, especially for technicians. Right. And one of the most interesting things this cycle is the volume. Uh, you know, normally in the old days, uh, rising volume went with, with bull markets, right. and, and and it's just about been the opposite this right. time. And I don't know if it's high frequency trading or programs or what it is, but it, and all the share repurchases, a there's less so shares, you, 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 you know. You get rules, but then you have to be flexible. Right. Yeah. So the the uh, the topic of this symposium is is uh, fusion analysis, which is is you know bringing together the technicals, the fundamentals, and the quant, which you're the master of. You may, maybe you perhaps even invented it. But so of, of the three disciplines, is, is there one that's sort of your go-to, or do you actually strongly feel in, that they all should be deserving of equal weight? Uh, we give extra heavy weight to the trend. Right. Uh, because uh, our view on making money rather than trying to be right is is don't make a big mistake. And I think technical technical analysis, standard technical analysis is your stop loss and it right. keeps you from the big mistake. Right. So even though that may not they, that may not bat out to be the best performer, uh, I think it's the safer way to go in the long run. Right. So that, that's what we weight the heaviest. I would say over the last 10 years, the Fed policy has pretty much dominated the markets. Right. But that Macro doesn't mean, Macro. you know, it could be valuation next year. It could right. be something else. Right. So it's hard to know when to throw indicators out. But right. I think... Uh, most of the weight goes on the tape. Yeah, one of the ones you can't throw out is, is trend because ultimately that's what you're trying to capture. Right, right. exactly. So you've, you've written uh, a couple books on the market. Um, I actually have a copy of your uh, Being Right or Making Money or Being Right. Yeah, and, <laughs> Being Right uh, Making Money. Yeah. Yeah, or, We're redoing uh, this. It's the third time we've redone it. Is that right? Yeah, and redoing, then you, uh, you had another book on contrary and investing. Yes. Right? So mm -hmm. those two sound almost... Uh, the opposite ends of each other. So one is about making sure you're on the right side of the tape, and the other is contrarian. So is there is it were there different themes or were they the same message? Spoken well, I like I, I like contrary opinion. I mean, if you said which which part of analysis right. is the most fascinating, I think it's the psychology, crowd psychology, right. and I think that ultimately drives most of the moves. But it's uh, it's a little dangerous. It's a little more dangerous. And so again, I don't. It may. You know, it, I may like it better. It may uh, it tops and bottoms. It works better, but yeah. it, it, it'll make a big mistake and a big move, and right. that's that's where you. So you, that's why that's why you need to fuse these type things together. Right. Uh, you know, be, because it, it can it can stumble. Something right. can stumble. Right. You. So, last question for you. Okay. So. Uh, you know, we've got sort of gone sideways in the market for a number of years now, and we appear to be finally emerging from this sideways range. Do you think we're in the uh, beginnings of a secular bull market? We'll look back in 10 years and identify it as, uh, as a start. Yes, uh, we, think, we think 2009 was a secular low, right. but just like 82 was a secular low, uh, excuse, 74 you could have said was a secular low, but you really, in 82, you hadn't gone anywhere for eight years. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. And after 32 was a, was a major low, and then we, we count the secular low from 42. Right. So there can be a long, uh, even after you've made a major low, there can be major tests, and it, it can take some time, and that, that's sort of where the camp I'm in. So the idea being that 2009 was the price low, but right. between now and then there may be better places to be, like some other asset class, but it ultimately... Well, I just feel like we've had, you know, five years up here, we could have a good correction. Right. That would be a better, better opportunity. Right. Well, very good. It's okay. nice catching up with you. Right. Thanks for your time. Yeah.